Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to you as we gather for worship this day. It is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and still we celebrate the good news that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. If you can hear my voice and you are here in the church parking lot, you've tuned in to the right station. 87.9 WZZZ Zion Radio. If you're joining us at home, we're glad you're here. We're here on the corner of our church parking lot and glad you're joining us from your corner of the world where you are. I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all. We give thanks to God for our mothers, for the motherly love we know so much in this life. Today we remember in our prayers all our mothers, those who live and nurture us now, those who have lost, and we commend to God. We also remember in our prayers this morning the family and friends of Ben Linder. Ben, a member of Zion, passed away last weekend. His memorial service will be scheduled for a later date. We're glad that you're joining us here online or in the parking lot. Remember all to go to zionlexsc.com for more resources, for ways to practice faith at home during this time of isolation, and for ways to give in support of the ministries of Zion Lutheran Church. That's zionlexsc.com. If you're here in the parking lot, just a very technical request of you, we would ask that if you curiously want to tune in to the Facebook Live broadcast or want to do some other business with your smartphone or tablet, that you would not use the Zion Wi-Fi from over in the sanctuary that you might be able to access from where you are because that will tie up some of our Wi-Fi frequency that we're trying to use to do all our broadcasts. So if you want to access things online, please use your data signal and not the church Wi-Fi uh, for the next 30 minutes or so. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's all right. Just, just carry on as you will. Hopefully you have your bulletin with you now or you can access it at zionlexsc.com. And we begin our worship this morning with our call to worship. O oh Lord, you are the way. In you I have taken refuge. Deliver me in your righteousness. O oh Lord, you are the truth. Be my rock and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. O oh Lord, you are the life. My times are in your hand. Let your face shine upon your servant and save me in your steadfast love. Jesus is risen. 
Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the 14th chapter of John's Gospel, a reading from John. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him, and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'm so glad you are here today, and so glad others are joining online. I want to take a minute to say thanks to the tech crew working this morning, Walt and Russell, and also Julie serving as our musician. You may not be able to see them, but they are here working and making things run well, so we can do this together. How about we say thank you to them by turning on our windshield wipers and waving at them in that way. That's for you guys. <laughs> Thanks. Lately, we have not known the way to do everything we've needed to do. People at church will ask me, Pastor, how did you all know the way to do these broadcasts or the Zoom meetings or the virtual ways of being church? And the answer is, we didn't. We were totally faking it. Maybe we still are, but we've really just had to learn the way to do all this as we've gone along. I'm sure there's been a lot of that for you too, hasn't there? You didn't necessarily know the way to work from home like you've done recently. You didn't know how to be a student that did everything through e-learning. You didn't know what it meant to not go out for weeks at a time. 
but you've learned the way to do this as you've gone along. And you've done your best. Or I don't know, maybe you've faked it. The point is, when things change, when the rug gets pulled out from under us, it leaves us feeling inadequate, leaves us scrambling to know the way forward. Have you felt that way recently? If you have felt that way, if you can put yourself in that mindset, then maybe you can imagine in just a small way what it felt like for the disciples of Jesus when they learned that they would be without him. How they felt inadequate. How they didn't know the way forward. That's what this passage from the 14th chapter of John's Gospel is. It's Jesus beginning to explain to his disciples his departure. And the disciples trying to come to terms with what Jesus means. At this moment in the story, Jesus is just hours away from being handed over. The cross looms large. Jesus will be taken away from these disciples. He has told them he will be with them only a little longer, but that he will make a way so that where he is, they may be also. And that's why the disciple Thomas says to Jesus this, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Can you hear in Thomas's question the confusion and the uncertainty? What these disciples know is what it means to be with Jesus. Life and ministry make sense when they are with him because they know him, but they don't know what life will be without him. And so Jesus responds, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Now I don't want to get caught up today in worrying too much about what Jesus means when he says no one comes to the Father except through me. I don't think Jesus is being particularly exclusive or judgmental there, but that's something to ponder for another day. What I want to focus on is how Jesus tells the disciples, if you know me, then you know everything you need to know, because I am the way. I am the one through whom you see God. In the midst of their fear and confusion about what happens next, Jesus told the disciples, If you know me, you know everything you need. They didn't need to worry about life without Jesus would be like. They didn't need to wonder how they would minister to the world. They didn't even have to learn a new way to be in relationship with God. They already knew what they needed to know because they knew Jesus. I am the way and the truth and the life, says Jesus. If you know me and have seen me, you will know my Father also. It's not meant to sound overly simplistic for us to believe this. This isn't Sunday school where every answer is supposed to be Jesus. What this is, is a model and a promise for us and for all of how to move forward when we do not know the way. Think about the concerns we are consumed with right now. What's life going to be like tomorrow or next week or next month? Think about the really big questions that we wrestle with. How do we balance a desire to protect people from illness with the need to pe get people working again? Will we have the strength to continue to care for so many sick? How can we unite to solve problems when we are so divided? 
I don't know the answer to those. You probably don't either. So much has changed, the rug pulled out, and we don't know. But, but we know Jesus. Because Jesus has come to be with us. Come to be, in, be a part of our lives by the Spirit. We know that the way forward has something, has everything to do with Him. We don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, but we do know Jesus has promised to abide with us always. We don't know the best way to care for all in the face of crisis, but we do know Jesus and the way he cared for all even to the point of death. We don't know how to solve all the world's problems, but we do know Jesus, who has shown us the Father, the one who rules the world with mercy, goodness, and love. Friends, let's be honest. We are all making it up as we go along. How to live right now how to work and find meaning in life, how to be disciples of Jesus in a time of isolation and stress and uncertainty. We are making it up, and that's all we can do, and that's okay. We don't have to know the way, because Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and we can rely on him. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Worshiping here and at home and wherever we are, let us unite our hearts as one to pray for all who are in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Holy God, we give thanks for the eternal relationship you share as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and for the ministry of Jesus, which shows us the way into this divine life. Keep your church in all places, close to Jesus, who has welcomed us into communion with you. Strengthen us, that we may show your way of salvation to others. Lord, in your mercy. When we do not know the way to go, O Lord, when we do not know what to do, give us your guidance and patience. Be with all who are in leadership roles and who are making decisions affecting others, that they will know what to do. Calm our anxieties about the time to come and help us to trust in your goodness above all else. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Still we pray, God of mercy, for those affected by COVID-19, for those in harm's way, for those who suffer. Be with nursing home residents and staff. Be with those administering virus tests. Be with those who clean areas exposed to illness. Be with those who must go to work even when they are not sure if they should. Send your mercy into these and every place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort the suffering, ease the worry of those in distress, and be with those for whom death draws near. We pray especially for all on our congregation prayer list and those we name to you now silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for mothers everywhere and for the motherly care we know from those you have put into our lives. We pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. Be with those who celebrate today and those for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring comfort to those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Ben Linder and all who have died who we remember this day. At the end, O Lord, bring us all to you who are the way, our truth, and our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At home, I invite you to share the peace with those around you, or to send a message of peace to those you know. Here in the parking lot, I invite you to share the peace in other creative ways. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that piece now. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Once again, thank you for joining us for worship this day. Please do visit zionlexsc.com for more resources to practice faith at home and for ways to give in support of the ministry of Zion Lutheran Church. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed! Alleluia! Go in peace! Share the good news! Thanks be to God!